This is a story about me and about you, about each of our own pilgrimages through life. We all know how it feels to face fears and mountains, to be beckoned down life's pathway along the journey. I pray that Le Voyage will bring renewal and hope and enlightenment to all my fellow travelers.
when I see a project, I just think, oh, what a really great picture. And, and not until I sort of got involved in this kind of thing myself did I realize how many people it takes to do something like this. A lot of very talented people who spend uh, a lot of time and a lot of energy to put something like that together. So we work pretty much from sun up to sundown. And Northern Arizona was magnificent. Well, you know what? Maybe you'd be interested in some of the behind the scenes things. Take a look. First off, it's way too early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Amazing. What your personal <laughs> hairstylist can do. Okay, let's try a shot real quick. Lock it, lock it. Here we go. My feelings about the place, it, it, um, it struck me as being someplace that was just out of time a little bit because um, it was just breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking. Um, we got to Lake Powell and we had our houseboats, which seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, other than the fact that we didn't have all the comforts of home, like, you know, VCR and TV and a phone, actually it turned out to be pretty fun. We just all became, it was like camp for about four days. We did have a mutiny today, which was kind of exciting. There's this a is... hand, a hand on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, in the middle of nowhere. Hey, what channel is this on? Y'all, y'all shooting a movie or something? Houseboat, Cary Grant, Sophia Loren, in color. Ted Turner's doing it. Nice bit of docking there, buddy. Hey. We got up really early before the, the sun was even up and started, you know, doing hair and makeup. What you don't know is behind the scenes, um, the houseboats that we had could not get all the way up to the beach, so they, they had to carry, you know, hundreds of pounds of equipment off of the boat through the water to another location to set up. I mean, these guys were troopers. Cameras reloaded. 20 seconds. Had a boy, guys. The best thing about today is, is it's beautiful again. Our feet are dry and the risk of slippage is low. I found out later that this was the same place that they had done Planet of the Apes. I understand also that the greatest story ever told was filmed there. Um, and from what I was told that the set is still underwater. Because they built the set and shot the movie before they filled the lake up. And then they finished the completed the movie, they filled the lake up. So now it's the lost city of Atlantis. So now Cecil B. DeMille and Steve Yake are shooting at the same place. And, you know, by 10 o'clock, we had put in a full day, 10 in the morning. They said, you know, bring some hiking boots. And I thought, well, why do I need hiking boots? But I'll bring hiking boots. Little did I know we were going to do some serious major hiking. He dragged us all out here, made everybody carry equipment, everybody. including Sandy. Yeah. And my object du jour was a 500-pound dolly. This will tell you something about a shoot. See these? <laughs> Those were brand new four days ago. Look at them. There was a specific um, look that we were going for, so it needed to be at night. The stars, the sky was absolutely magnificent. And then um, the closer we got to where the film crew had set up for the shoot, they had these enormous lights. Remember, see, there's no electricity. So all, of, all those batteries had to be carried out there. All those lights had to be carried out there. And it was very impressive to look at. Are you okay? To do another one? Under there. Okay. Let's make this like about a three and a half foot. Okay. Four foot uh, art, Brad. No more than like three or four feet. Keeping it tight. Let's shoot from this end down here, so we got the depth. This is our last shot, guys. I want coffee. Okay, ready? Here we go. Oh. It's laid up. Here we go, Brad. Roll track. Track rolling. There's a hand. That's a good speed, Stace. One more. Just one more. <laughs> I love this She man. loves me. She loves me. You can tell. <laughs> now, Mr. Yake? Yeah. No, no. We'll tell you when, okay? Okay. 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 She's, she's got a good attitude. She's enthusiastic, but... Most of the time, they, they lose interest after a while. <laughs> These are hands that are uh, tying up different parts of the boat in preparation for Sandy's journey. She doesn't know it, but the hands are already getting ready for her. Two days or three days into the shoot, 
we were doing the video, and they said, okay, now this shot, we want to send you out into the lake by yourself in the sailboat. And I thought, okay, all right, I'm, I'm, I can do this. I'm a professional. Um, but, you know, a sailboat, I have not had much experience with a sailboat. There's just not, you know, there's not a lot of stability. You really have to work with the sailboat or it works against you. We're hooking up this remote rig to do the ultimate sunset shot. I'd like to point out that Dennis is Mr. Die Hard. He's doing everything in bare feet. I can't find my shoes. You're going down. That's, that's 20. And then you let go and go off so that she's got a little bit of a grip. Light's looking real nice. Are you ready? Okay, turn the camera on. Okay, to the positions. And they push me out and say action. And You know, I mean, if, if I hadn't stayed perfectly still, it could have tipped over at any time, but... Um, you know, that's just, that's just part of the excitement, is all that risk-taking. If you ever get to a phone, call your people. I remember kind of the end of the very last day we were doing some helicopter shots. And there was no communication because my radio had gone down, the, the director's radio had gone down. Because it was a helicopter shot, there could be nobody else around the premises for miles and miles, it seemed. So I was standing on this lone rock all by myself. All I could hear was, you know, the helicopter swooshing by. And I had to continue to stay in character. And the director was trying to give me hand signals. And I got totally frustrated and threw my gloves down. Anyway, that was the only stressful time of the, of the whole trip. Right. Clouds fade, even on a bad day, even when the bow breaks in the wind. Love stays, even when a man cries, though a part of him dies in the end. I love that lyric because it, it truly says, I think, um, what life is, that in times of, of, of death, whether it's a part of yourself, there's still love that can continue to grow. There are different change points in our life that are that shape our life dramatically and um, are all significant parts of our journey not for the purpose to leave us wounded but I think for the purpose of making the journey all that it can be through all of the the difficult circumstances in our life there's still a hand on our shoulder walking us through it's like you know all of these other things you know just create smoke and and uh, like a like dust that just just blows up when that dust settles there's still a hand there that has been there all along and that will continue to be there in the darkness in the light in the pain in the joy in the triumph and also in the tragedy it's always there How long has Le Voyage been coming about? The whole idea of Le Voyage has been uh, in the process of being birthed for three years. How long has Le Voyage been in the making? I guess the first time was two and a half years ago when we were first introduced to it in uh, Sandy's office complex in Indiana. Yeah, I think it's been about a little over two years. We spent about four months in the initial writing of it. And then uh, it's been about three years. It's really just been two and a half years. We're very anxious to unveil it. The songs just capture the essence of the story in such a beautiful, beautiful way. I think one of the things that we've lost in the last few years in musical expression is really the album as an art form. And that's what Le Voyage is all about. It's taking a concept and putting that concept into words and presenting a story. The idea for Le Voyage, the concept is real simple, that every person has their own spiritual pilgrimage they're on, and we all have to kind of follow the little narrow path, and we have individual things, yes, but we also have commonalities, mountaintop experiences and rebellion and all those things, and that's what the idea of it is, every person's journey. It's a story, it's a journey, it's a, it's a project that not only just needs to be listened to, but it needs to be experienced. And that's the exciting part about 
uh, this whole project to me, this isn't about another artist. This isn't about what a record company wants. This isn't about what the church is saying. This is about what we're experiencing in our whole lives. Whenever you venture out um, into uncharted waters, new territory, there's a risk involved. And this project is, is um, definitely a risk-taking project, but it's something that I feel so, so strongly about. We all walked into this project and said, okay, we're not going to look at, we're not going to just assume we're going to do everything the same way, which challenge you to, challenges you to kind of change your, your paradigm. And when you get a chance to do that, you think of all kinds of new things that you would never have thought of before. Okay, hey, we're getting better. It's still not there. It's, now it's too dark. Too yeah. dark and it's not sitting. I like figure here for time working on these. Hey, Bill, which pickups do you like the best? This? Yeah. Yeah, I like that better. I got a chance to sing with an incredible singer named John Elefante, um, who just, I mean... I would say, well, you know, I'm kind of looking for something like this, and, and he'd sing it, and he'd say, you mean like that? And I would say, mm, that's like basically perfect there. Um, what a wonderful singer, and, to, and, and he also challenged me to kind of try some new things um, with my voice and to expand my musical horizons. One of my favorite songs in this is Little Narrow Gate, and it, uh, it's a very simple little song, but it's uh, very engaging. It when you look at the people involved here, Bob Farrell and Greg Nelson, two of the most amazing songwriters in the country, Sandy, an incredible vocalist, and then bringing in somebody like Robbie Buchanan to arrange all of the songs. Uh, this is a gentleman who has done uh, amazing things for Bette Midler and other uh, major artists in this country. Also arranged the recent duet, Beauty and the Beast. Greg Nelson and I um, kind of presented the very skeleton forms of these songs to Robbie. He said, um, do your thing. Do that Robbie Buchanan thing. was um, getting to work with some different musicians that I had not worked with before. Um, Jeremy Lovick is an incredible arranger and orchestrator and he's somebody that I have, I have admired his work for such a long time. I have albums that his name appears time after time after time on the credits. When he stepped into the room and commanded a almost 70 piece orchestra to his attention and, and they followed him like a hawk and he just created such emotion to the music. It really challenged me to um, different kinds of musical styles that have not been really in my, in my work before. I love the Impressionists. 
I love uh, Ravel. I love uh, Debussy, and I love the painting of that that uh, that era. And I wanted the music uh, to be more open voicing uh, music that would was moving and painted pictures. I truly think that Bob Farrell and Greg Nelson. Um, when you talk 30 years from now about songs that have lasted for a lifetime, their names are going to be on a lot of those songs. So I guess the, the big question is why do a project like this? I would really like to see people take a look at the work and say, hey, that's me. That's where I am and be able to take an overview of the whole work and see that in their life there's hope. What I hope that it can do is challenge people to um, see their life as a journey as well. Le Voyage, the book and the music together, becomes an event. It becomes each person's journey. And that's what's important, how they each tie together. And the book is simply a further manifestation of what the songs are talking about. Ben and Jerry's, it's a very important part of making music. One of the most wonderful discoveries for me on this project was to realize, I think, how blessed I am. There's a lot of unexpected friends that come along our path. Sometimes we know them and they take on new light and sometimes we don't even know them. To find that to be really true in the story and to also find that to be really true in my own life was a wonderful discovery. The companion in my life is Jesus Christ and that is who I see when I think of this story is he is the one who walks with me through the difficult places and he is the one who rejoices with me on the top of the mountain and, and he is the one who holds my hand through the forest of fears and he is the one who urges me on and, and this is probably a way for me to um, to express the things that have been going on in my life but more than anything else to to talk about the faithfulness of God and how he's been with me through the entire process. There's a hand. Wherever